Is Donald Trump playing with fire by backing Kurds in Syria? Yes, he is, says Turkey, which feels threatened by a new army of 30,000 mainly Kurdish soldiers on the Turkish border. How much volatility will they add to the war zone? This is Inside Story. Welcome to the program. I'm Jane Dutton. U.S. support for Kurds in Syria is leading to threats of retaliation from Turkey. The U.S.-led coalition plans to set up a 30,000-strong force in Syria just across the border with Turkey. Turkey's president thinks the Kurdish-led force is a threat and is vowing to attack the city of Afrin in northern Syria. Afrin is a major stronghold of YPG Kurdish fighters. Turkey considers the YPG a terrorist group linked to Kurdistan Workers' Party or the PKK fighters who've waged a long war against Turkish dominance. Marina Hund reports. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan using a party address to look staunch in the face of a US-backed Kurdish force on his southern border. He promised to respond with a show of force saying Turkey will launch its own military operation in the northern Syrian city of Afrin. Just like we do not let the Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK, open their eyes within our borders, we are determined to vanquish them on the other side of our border. God willing, in the coming days, we will continue the operation to purge our southern border from terror. Turkey has fought Kurdish factions within its borders for more than 30 years and doesn't want to see the Kurds gain power in neighbouring Syria. The US and the European Union say the PKK is a terror group, but in northern Syria the Americans say they're supporting Kurdish forces, not the PKK specifically. The Kurds are the most effective fighting force against the Islamic State in uh, Syria, and they've been very successful at that. That's the American purpose. But the Turks regard the Kurds and the YPG as a dire threat. U.S. President Trump promised Erdogan that he would stop arming and training Kurd fighters, but the Pentagon never made that official. Now Turkey is furious about reports of a new U.S.-backed border force of 30,000 personnel with the Syrian Democratic Forces, a group largely controlled by the Kurdish YPG. They will reportedly deploy along the border of Turkey, Iraq to the southeast and the Euphrates River Valley, the dividing line with Assad's military. The American-backed Kurdish YPG posted this online in December, purporting to show clashes with Turkish forces. It's in Afrin in northern Syria, the same Kurdish enclave where Erdogan now says he will launch a military operation in the coming days. Despite it all, we believe we have common interests with America in the region and hope we can act in concert. Because the time has come to support Turkey and the time to give strategic cooperation is due. Afrin could be the test for a difficult three-way relationship between powers in the Syrian war. Turkey, the United States and the Kurdish fighters so hated by one side and supported by the other. Miriam Nahond, Al Jazeera. Well, it's bringing our guests, joining us from Washington, D.C., Garan Ozkan, People's Democratic Party representative to the United States of America. HDP is a Kurdish opposition group in Turkey. In Istanbul, Metan Gurjan, a security analyst and former Turkey military officer. And from Arezzo, Italy, by Skype, is Joshua Landis, a director, Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Oklahoma. Very warm welcome to all three of you. Let me start off with you. Joshua Landis, what do you make of this outright support now for the Kurds in Syria and the U.S. backing this 30,000-strong force? Well, it's, a, it's, it's clearly a new departure for the United States. The U.S. went into Syria saying that it was a very narrow policy to defeat ISIS. Today, ISIS is largely defeated. Yes, there needs to be more policing, but the United States has developed a policy which goes far beyond defeating ISIS. Today, it is trying to roll back Iran, 
weaken Assad, help its allies Israel and Saudi Arabia, and deny Assad capability to rebuild, to keep it weak and divided. This means supporting the Kurds in the north and a larger enclave. This has infuriated Turkey and Erdogan. It is driving Turkey towards Russia. And I believe it's a dangerous policy for the United States because it'll be very difficult and it will isolate the United States from Assad, Iran, Turkey, and eventually even Iraq. Metan Gurjan, what do you think the US is up to here? And how are you gauging Turkish response and the military response? Yes, ma'am. I mean, uh, just literally three hours ago, uh, President Erdogan, uh, he made a very, very strong speech. And uh, this has been um, the most inflammatory speech uh, that he made uh, so far. So Ankara uh, is thinking that uh, YPG forces, uh, PKK affiliated YPG forces, is an imminent uh, threat uh, for the security of uh, Turkey. And Ankara is uh, very firm on uh, this issue. Uh, with this rhetoric, uh, President Erdogan has been trying to emphasize, underline uh, this uh, fact. And uh, ma'am, I have to say that uh, when taking into account uh, the military situation on the ground, it is very hot. It's get, getting increasingly hot at the moment. And wait, when taking into Ankara's uh, firm stance against uh, YPG, I'm thinking that I suggest that uh, an armed confrontation in the north of Syria between Turkish military or Turkish military backed uh, Free Syrian Army Forces and YPG forces is imminent. Uh, the scale of this armed confrontation is, however, is not uh, determined by Ankara, neither Ankara nor YPG, but is going to be decided on, the, on two capitals. First one is Moscow, the second one is uh, DC. And is Erdogan's, are Erdogan's concerns about YPG justified? Is it as much of a threat to Turkey as he considers it to be? I have to say that, uh, you know, to, uh, 2018, uh, this year, 2018, is going to be, uh, with a high probability, is going to be an election year. Of course, uh, I mean, the strategic rationale behind the, his uh, inflammatory rhetoric, first one is surely it's because of domestic political consumption. But the second uh, point is also relevant, I think. Uh, Turkey or Ankara has been feeling a grave uh, threat uh, by being encircled by the uh, terror belt or PKK belt stretching from the north of, uh, I mean, northern Iraq, uh, starting from Kandil via Sinjar region connecting Syria to Iraq with those uh, two cantons in the uh, west, I mean, in the east of Euripides, I mean, Jezira and Kobani cantons, and the, this uh, canton in the west of Eurofits, I mean the Kobani canton. So uh, Ankara right now has been feeling under very uh, big uh, pressure on how to first uh, prevent uh, from uh, pre prevent this uh, terror belt or PKK belt uh, from uh, happening and how to control uh, things going on in the north of Syria. And Geran Oza Khan, your view, the Kurdish view of these moves by the US? Well, uh, the moves by the U.S. seem to uh, please the Kurds in the region, firstly, uh, because until now, uh, the, the alliance between the Kurds and the U.S. has been largely uh, seen as transactional. I mean, certain uh, U.S. officials have said that that relationship is a tactical relationship and is based on the defeat of ISIS. But uh, as we see now, that uh, ISIS has largely been defeated in Syria, but this relationship is continuing. Uh, the U.S. says that this is to uh, maintain stability in the region. And I think the Kurds are pleased by this, that this relationship can move forward from not just uh, defeating ISIS, but uh, maintaining a stability in the wider region, but also maybe uh, further down the line turn into a political relationship rather than just merely uh, a military one against uh, a joint enemy. So I think uh, the step taken by the U.S. now with uh, the border security force or further diplomatic relationships, which seem to be uh, also developing at the same time, are pleasing the Kurds in Syria specifically. Yeah, because Metin Erdogan said that Trump had to choose between Turkey, a NATO ally, 
or the Kurds. This sort of move seems to suggest that Trump and the U.S. have made up their mind when it comes to this relationship. Yes, I mean, this is a clear message. Ankara has been trying to increase its leverage. Uh, I mean, uh, ma'am, in the post-ISIS uh, setting, there are three things uh, to be done in Syria at the moment. First one is to tame uh, Assad. Uh, uh, the second one is to balance Iran's increasing influence, particularly in the north of Syria. And the third one is uh, to uh, first uh, marginalize and then eliminate Salafi jihadi motivation. In, in north of Syria. So this, for these three tasks, I think both U.S. controlling the east of Eurofits and Russia controlling the west of Eurofits, uh, they have been relying on YPG as a coherent military force on the ground, as a local uh, proxy, and, and PYD as a, a political actor uh, to achieve these three objectives. So Ankara has been seeing this, uh, and then Ankara right now, by pressuring, uh, by creating a sort of pressure on the strategic decision-making mechanisms in the DC, has been uh, proposing this uh, grim uh, or important uh, factor of NATO memberships and the traditional uh, alliance between US and uh, Turkey. Joshua, it seems by this move and the fact that the US went ahead unilaterally, that they've done nothing to appease the Turks here. Can they afford to do that now? Well, that's the big question. That's the million dollar question. The United States does seem to be giving up on Turkey. There's no doubt about it. By supporting Kurdish nationalism in northern Syria, um, this is alienating Turkey. It's been driving Turkey into the arms of Russia, as we've seen over the last few years. Turkey was hoping that that relationship, US-Kurdish relationship, would begin to reverse once ISIS was destroyed. That is not the case. The United States is building an argument for remaining in northern Syria. Saudi Arabia would like the United States to remain there. Israel would like the United States to remain there, to cut down Assad's government, and to deny the Syrian uh, government oil, water, and agricultural land. That's what chopping Syria into two and developing a long-term relationship with the Kurds in the north, helping them to uh, develop greater independence will ultimately do. It'll keep Syria very weak. This is a way to deny Iran the uh, fruits of its victory in Syria and also to bring Russia down a notch. So I think the United States is seeing this as a way to hurt its enemies, Russia and Iran, and to help its allies, um, both Israel and Saudi Arabia. The trouble is, is that Turkey is collateral damage here. The United States' relationship with Turkey is going from bad to worse. And this dependence on the Kurds is, in a sense, underlining that. The United States, unfortunately, I believe, has looked at Turkey as a lost partner, that it's moved towards dictatorship, greater Islamism, less democracy, is not something that's gonna be reversed and that America can reverse. I think the United States and the State Department increasingly is writing off Turkish interests. Mitten, and that is gonna to lead that? to a clash. I, I mean, to some extent, I, I agree with Joshua, but uh, the point I'm, I'm trying to emphasize is this uh, green fact for Turkey for almost uh, two weeks we see a sort of strategic shift in the narrative of U.S. decision makers, you know, uh, particularly in the, uh, when they are talking about uh, their activities in the east of Eurofits. You know, once uh, they were saying that the, the U.S. decision makers, American decision makers, they were saying that uh, their cooperation with uh, YPG forces on the ground is uh, very limited at the tactical level and only limited with the fight against ISIS. But with this uh, shift, uh, strategic shift of this narrative of, uh, you know, right now uh, the U.S. decision makers are talking about creation of a standing army uh, for border protection, uh, you know, the army of the north involving around 30,000, you know, combat proven soldiers. Uh, what we are here talking about, the uh, emergence or a creation of a uh, standing army. I think with this strategic shift uh, of narrative, uh, raise the alarm, I will say, uh, bells in, in Ankara. This is the first point, uh, the critical juncture that we have to uh, remember. The second issue, I think, in, in, in the uh, right now uh, west of 
Euripides, we see the advance of those Russia-backed Assad forces uh, to Idlib, into Idlib city center, uh, you know, controlled by uh, radical elements uh, within HTS. So Ankara also uh, has been a little bit disturbed by this recent development, and we see some complainings about Ankara, this uh, advance, this attack uh, towards it, the world um, create a sort of friction in, okay, in the okay, very let me, let fragile me bring, uh, let me bring coalition in here. between I mean, 30, uh, Russia, Turkey, and Iran. 30, so, sorry, I, I, I want to do. I, I do want to talk about those three. But um, yes. Giran, I mean, this is quite a military force, isn't it? Thirty thousand. Many countries don't have that. Do you think this will yeah, be yeah, the core right. of some and sort of are, Kurdish military? About... Uh, uh, sorry, this is to Giran. Um, it yeah, may well sorry, be, no. uh, but I think. I think the highlight here, I think what we, what we need to highlight is that the relationship between the US and the Kurds is going to continue. And, uh, and this uh, implies maybe not directly a nation building project by the US, but it definitely implies that there's going to be some sort of uh, a consistent relationship in the short and medium term. And uh, I think another thing that we have to underline here is the Turkish states, uh, the Turkish nation states historic uh, the, the dislike towards Kurdish aspirations in the region. And uh, as, as this relationship develops between the Kurds and the US, and as this moves on from a merely military relationship to a more diplomatic and political one, which may well turn into a strategic, a strategic relationship, uh, the Turkish state's reactions are going to be more aggressive. And I think that's what uh, this whole rhetoric is mostly about. Yes, I understand the international uh, conjuncture and how the international relations are playing a huge part uh, in, in this problem right now. And I agree with Joshua that, uh, and, and uh, Metin actually as well, that this is going to be between Moscow and DC. But I think that there is an, a, a current that has to be highlighted here that the Turkish state's historic reactions towards any sort of Kurdish aspirations in terms of both autonomy or independence. Uh, it's it's a severe aggression, and uh, this displeases uh, the uh, Turkey, uh, the Turkish state. And uh, I mean, we saw this in Iraqi Kurdistan too. Uh, the reflexes of uh, the Turkish state in Iraqi Kurdistan were similar. Uh, yes, they weren't as aggressive, but they too, at the same time, in Iraqi Kurdistan, were also against uh, the Kurds of uh, South uh, Iraqi Kurdistan developing their nationalist aspirations. And now with what's going on in north of Syria, with the US until uh, recently was saying that the relationship with the Kurds is transactional. But right now, after the defeat of ISIS, I think the Turkish state is beginning to understand and, uh, well, ceasing to be gullible in this sense, that the US is going to maintain uh, a longer relationship with the Kurds. And I agree with Joshua that, yes, this is at the expense of Turkey, that, that the US is uh, slowly less concerned about uh, losing Turkey to Russia, which previously the State Department and the US has always been worried about. But I think that concern is much less now than what it used to be, uh, especially with Erdogan at the helm. This may change uh, okay. at some point Joshua, in the future. Joshua, let me ask you about the, the change the of attitude sorry, that you raised there. I mean, the U.S. was against the Kurdistan, the independence referendum in Iraq, and yet they seem to support this similar type of action, if it ever were to get to that point, in Syria. A real change in policy here, isn't it? It is. It is. And I think you're very right to bring up that comparison, because uh, many friends have been saying, oh, but they'll, America will abandon the Kurds in Syria the way they have abandoned them in Iraq. Now, first of all, I do not think the United States has abandoned the Kurds in Iraq. The referendum deal in which the Baghdad government took Kirkuk, a disputed city, and America did nothing, was something that the United States had always told the Kurds that they couldn't have, they couldn't just take Kirkuk. I don't think the United States has abandoned the Kurds in Iraq. But, but the, clearly the accusation has been made and this makes America more sensitive to abandoning the Kurds in Syria. The big difference is that America does not like Assad and sees Damascus as an enemy. America's allies, Israel and Saudi Arabia, both want to weaken Assad. By staying and helping the Kurds in northern Syria, the United States is hurting 
its enemies and helping its friends. The United States sees Baghdad as a friendly power. And this. they built the Constitution. The United States did help build the Constitution, and it's going to defend it in Iraq. In Syria, the United States believes it can use the Kurds to gain leverage over Assad to fulfill the Geneva process, which the United States is trying to pursue, a peace process that will allow the U.S. and its allies to gain important interests in Damascus. I don't believe it will succeed in this. But I do believe the United States is committing itself in the medium and short term to the Kurds of northern Syria. And this is a big change for and, the and region. It sounds like, and like a pretty dangerous time. game, doesn't it? Uh, uh, threatening their former allies in a sense. Metin, where do you think this leaves Damascus? Or do you think Bashar al-Assad will say, listen, you know, I've all but cleaned up here in Syria. It's nearly a victory for me. I'm prepared to let this go. Uh, I, uh, I'm inclined to buy this argument of U.S. has been, I mean, is now less concerned about Ankara's interest and prior, uh, prioritizations in Syria. I, I am inclined to buy that argument. Uh, the point uh, I'm trying to emphasize is, is an important, uh, how can I say, getting increasingly visible, uh, dynamic. Uh, the instrumentalization of uh, YPG uh, as a coherent military force on the ground and PYD as the political actor uh, in the rivalry between uh, Russia and the US in, 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 in the post-ISIS setting in Syria. So uh, Turkey has been, or Ankara has been trying to accommodate uh, these uh, two uh, system level actors and their uh, diverging interests, uh, which is getting harder and harder. Uh, every, uh, you know, passing months for Turkey. And 2018, I think 2018 will be a decisive year. Uh, we will see whether Turkey is going to uh, accommodate uh, this uh, diverging interest of two system level actors, you know, uh, one controlling U.S. controlling the east of Europe, it's uh, Russia controlling the west of Europe, it's and uh, right now, uh, also another important dynamic, at the end of January, we have Sochi, you know, meeting. And uh, this will be a very, very important meeting uh, for Turkey and the promotion of Turkey's uh, agenda in, in, in Sochi. We will see whether uh, Tehran or Moscow will be happy with that or not. So, uh, as I said before, the instrumentalization of YPG uh, between, uh, in the rivalry between Russia and U.S. in the future of Syria, I think, is an important dynamic that okay, okay, Ankara has been trying this, to digest. Let me just this uh, question very quickly digest, to Giron, but, if, if I may. Uh, Sorry, we, we are, we are uh, running out of time. I'm just wondering how the Kurds Ankara. will play this now, because it could possibly be seen that Kurds are one of the few winners from the Syrian war now. Well, I mean, the Kurds up until now have uh, actually uh, balanced uh, a good relationship with both the US and Russia. And uh, one must accept there's not, a, not many forces on the ground in the region that have been able to do this. Uh, and yes, the Kurds, uh, since the uh, outbreak of the conflict in Syria, have had relationships with both sides, are currently still mant maintaining a relationship with Russia uh, to the west of the Euphrates and with the U.S. to the east of the Euphrates. Now, uh, what will happen uh, if Erdogan does uh, actually follow through with his threats and attack Afrin? Uh, we know that the only way that could possibly happen is if Russia allows uh, for the Turkish army to actually enter the city, uh, whether it opens up its airspace uh, to the Turkish army. And so I think if that does happen, then there's going to be a difficult discussion between the Kurds and Russia then. And um, both Russia and the U.S. understand the importance of having uh, a healthy relationship with the Kurds in Syria. And okay, until let's now, leave it there. I'm that afraid has proved beneficiful out of time. for the Kurds in Syria. Many moving parts to the story. Thanks for discussing it with us very much. Geran Ozkan, Metin Gurjan and Joshua Landis. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Jane Dutton, and the whole team here, goodbye for now.